Good morning, friend. We just got to my, well, I just got to my mom's house. My mom's been here. Hi. And we are getting ready to cook our Christmas feast or prepare our Christmas feast because we're celebrating tomorrow. And we've got a ton of recipes. How many recipes do we have, Mom? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, a couple off the top of our head that we don't need recipes for. And we did the, the carrot, cheesecake. cheese, cheese, carrot cake. We baked it yesterday, so I'll be assembling and frosting it today. So my sister is doing the main dish, which is she's gonna do beef burgundy for the main dish. So my mom and I are responsible for the sides and for the appetizers. So what my mom is doing now is she's going through and she's marking one, two, three, four, what order we're gonna make these in. Most of these are new to us, but there are a couple that are tried and true, like the jalapeno or cranberry salsa dip, delicious, but new is crab cakes. Well, my mom has made these before, but we've never made them together with you. I've actually never had them. Um, the fruit dip I've never had, the cheese ball we've never made. Mom, you've never made a cheese ball before, I did you? when you were little. Okay. I used to make um, uh, pumpkin-shaped ones for Thanksgiving. Oh, I don't remember and, that. Yeah, you were little. And then, the, a new one I'm really excited about. We saw this, I saw this on Instagram. It's a roasted sweet potato goat cheese salad, but it's cold with arugula and a vinaigrette dressing, which sounds delicious. Cheesy potatoes or AKA funeral potatoes. Those are, you've probably seen those online. So my mom oh, has- I didn't get the recipe out for Striped Delight. Oh yes, Striped Delight. So that's another, Family so favorite. that's seven recipes. That is a pudding recipe that is family favorite. So we're celebrating Christmas. But we've got a couple birthdays we're celebrating as well. And so for the desserts, we're doing the carrot cake with the cheesecake filling and Striped Delight because that is what the birthday people requested. So mom, do you have a preference? Oh, you already marked it. So the first thing, crab cakes. You wanna make the crab cakes because I've never made sure. those before? Sure. And then maybe while you're making the crab cakes, I could do the pecan cranberry cheese ball. Whoop, because that looks really easy. <laughs> looks really Tape easy. Tape to the rescue. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll do this. My mom has slowly been getting a couple things out ready for today. Yesterday, if you missed it, we <laughs> made the cheesecake and the carrot cake and we also left some of the ingredients out. And I know that I need this and this for the cheese ball. A couple things that I needed to bring that we couldn't find at the store or I already had so we didn't need to buy them were some pine nuts. That's for the sweet potato salad. Some sausage, mom, do you want to get that some in some cold water to thaw, that's yes. frozen. That's for the jalapeno popper recipe and some pecans. And I need the pecans for the recipe I'm getting started with. And my mom has gotten all the ingredients she needs for the crab cakes. She's gonna do the crab cakes first and I'm gonna do the cheese ball. The way that we used to do Christmas growing up is we would have a huge Christmas Eve dinner at my parents' house. And that was with all of our extended family that lived close. And we would do hors d'oeuvres and then my mom would make the Christmas feast. And she always made ham. And we had cheesy potatoes and what was the other? Jello salad, it was a seven or eight layer jello salad my mom ribbon. would make. It was a ribbon jello salad. Yeah, it was really pretty. It took all day the day before to make it. And then on Christmas morning, we would celebrate that and have a big Christmas breakfast feast with cinnamon rolls and eggs and bacon. One other jello salad we did that is a historical classic jello salad that I actually have made a few times recently until our oldest daughter moved out of town is it's uh, lemon jello, it's cold cooked rice, chopped pecans, crushed pineapple. Oh yeah, wasn't that Grandma Jones' recipe? Yeah, Grandma Jones' recipe, and all folded into uh, whipped cream. Oh, wow. So the jello wasn't set. Uh, you got it like that really thick syrupy stage before it set hard, and you folded all that together in the whipped cream. <laughs> it was like dessert called a salad. Yeah, well I think most of those are, were basically desserts. And then on Christmas day, we would have a big breakfast, do presents and all that stuff, stockings, and then we would have hors d'oeuvres for that night and eat the leftover Christmas. And we would invite a bunch of friends over and play games. And so this year we're kind of doing a combination of, we're, we're only doing one big Christmas celebration with my parents. And so we're doing hors d'oeuvres and the big dinner 
all at once. And games. My sister's got some fun games that she wants to play. And so it's going to be a, a it's going to be fun. Yeah, we used to do uh, games that were games that anyone could play, like not a skilled game, because we always had a wide variety of, of ages and skill sets. So you know, we did different white elephant games and the yeah. pass the gift, and then of course, then there was one gift that nobody wanted, yeah. and then there was one that everybody wanted. So it it was always a lot of fun. But we haven't done that in recent years because the grandkids were all very little. Yeah. And now they're getting big enough to actually play those games. So in here, I have one cup of sharp cheddar cheese and two blocks of cream cheese. My mom is straining the crab that my sister caught with my brother-in-law. And you, I think you yes. guys. Oh, yep. yes, I went fishing too. Yeah, they went First fish time I went deep sea fishing. They went was crabbing over the summer. And they shucked the crab, their Dungeness crab, and then they... Isn't that lovely? They froze them. And so my sister, I picked that up actually at my sister's house this morning on the way over here. And that is gonna be turned into crab cake. So I'm gonna bring you in so you can see, and my mom's gonna make the crab cake recipe while I make the cheese ball recipe. The crab cakes are really pretty because they show the red and green in them as well. Yeah, that's nice. And I'm gonna chop the red pepper and the green onion a fairly small, a dice, so that when you're eating it, you don't get a huge flavor bite of onion or pepper. My mom's chopping the pepper for the crab cakes, and I'm gonna go ahead and chop the cranberries. We need one cup of cranberries chopped. My mom needed some cracker crumbs, so I thought I would go ahead and get these made up for her real quick. I just have a blender here with some Ritz crackers. Throw that in the blender. We're gonna need to make some graham cracker crumbs for the Stripe Delight recipe, and so we can just use this next. Mom, that is about one and a half cups. Okay, perfect. Does that work for you? Yeah. So can I just put that in this bowl for you? Uh, I'd have the eggs in there, I didn't crack them yet. You want me to crack them for you? Sure. So eggs in here for the crab cakes. Green onions, red peppers, you chop those really Parsley. nice and fine. Well, like I said, I want them not to overpower the bite of the crab cake. Yeah. I want the crab to be the biggest flavor punch, but I want the color and the texture and the flavor of those other ingredients. A couple of dashes of hot sauce, and this is hot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine. We'll just add one more. Then we need a half a teaspoon of garlic. And this is that yummy roasted garlic, except I'm going to, I'm doubling it, so I need a one teaspoon. And then paprika, a half, so I need a whole. That's that yummy smoked paprika as well. Salt. Redmond Real Salt. You almost forgot mayonnaise. I forgot the soft stuff at the top. Uh, that looks good. Uh, Dijon mustard, give that little tang. One, two teaspoons. In Worcestershire, that would be three teaspoons. One, two, three. I'm gonna fold it all together, and I'll put the crab in after this is the proper consistency, so it takes just a small amount of stirring so as not to break up the crab lumps. We want the crab lumps to be as big as possible, but we need this to bind it all together so the crab cake stays a cake and doesn't become a crab crumble. But if it becomes a crab crumble, that's really okay because I'll put that on a salad, yeah, and that good. will be tasty, or I'll put it on a piece of toast, or I'll eat it with a spoon. 
This is the loveliest crab I have ever seen. Full, full claws. That looks beautiful, Mom. I don't know where you were the last time we had this. We've, I've done it maybe four times uh, in the summer, but maybe, I don't know, maybe you were somewhere else and didn't make that particular Yeah, I haven't event. seen this recipe for crab cakes, but it looks beautiful. It is very pretty. It's very appealing because of the color, and it's, to me, very tasteful. Sometimes crab cakes are not bland, but it's just crab, and this has so much more in it. Now, the trick is to refrigerate it Press together so oh, before that. Before you shape it? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. So it binds together. Okay. Uh, and then overnight is the. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll. Oh, I'll, so we won't actually shape those till tomorrow? Correct. Oh, okay. Um, I will plop it onto a piece of plastic and draw it up like you would a pastry. Okay. To hold it all together. Okay. I think I'm actually going to do it in a log shape that will make it easier to get into the crab cakes. I'll use a. Uh, scoop to uh, get them consistent sizes so that they fry up the same length of time. Well, that was really easy to throw that together. It is quite a, an easy recipe. Well, especially because you... Uh, oh, yeah, you, we, did, we picked the crab yeah. like months oh. ago in the summer. Your previous self's efforts are paying off. So here I have chopped my cranberries and I have half the cranberries in here with half the pecans in here and half of the green onions. And then I added the other half of pecans and green onions and cranberries into my actual cheese ball mixture. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix this together. I'm gonna get a new spoon. I haven't done it this way by making it a log shape. I think it's ingenious. We'll see if it actually makes a difference in scooping and shaping them. That's a good idea. It's kind of like Play-Doh. Yeah. So I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. The recipe doesn't call for that, but I think it would not hurt it to add a little bit of salt and pepper. So now we're gonna mix this up, and now we've got officially, basically, two recipes almost. Well, they're prepared for tomorrow. So this does need to chill for a little bit, and then we'll roll it in the rest of the goodies here. But in a matter of just a few minutes, we have two of the appetizers going. Well, that looks lovely, doesn't it? Yeah, good job, Mom. Now let me find a little place in the refrigerator to slide it. I used a really sharp cheddar cheese in this. I thought that the sharp cheddar would contrast the creamy. Oh, the sweet cranberries. Oh, yeah, the too. sweet cranberries and the creaminess of the cream, the tanginess of the cream cheese. Ooh, this is soft. Do you want a cookie sheet to put that on? Well, I'm just gonna try it like this and push it down my arm into the refrigerator. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll put my arm all the way in. I need a piece of, I need to do that same thing with this cheese ball. We're gonna shape this cheese ball with some saran wrap, so I'm just gonna stick this here. Now, I thought you roll, oh, you roll it in the pecans. Yes, and uh, well, there's pecans and cranberries and green onions in oh, here. Oh, and you just chop that up finer? Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. My mom's putting away the stuff from the crab cakes and she's gonna set up for the next recipe while I get this cheese ball onto the saran wrap. If I tried to roll this in those goodies right now, it would be way too soft. So we're going to shape it into a ball and we're gonna pop this into the refrigerator. We have two recipes prepared for tomorrow. So now my mom is gonna get going on the three ingredient marshmallow fluff fruit dip, which I've never had that one before either and it sounds really delicious. And I'm gonna get going while she gets going on that on the roasted sweet potato goat cheese salad. This is a salad that is gonna be served cold and so we can roast the sweet potatoes today make the vinaigrette and get everything prepared so that tomorrow all we have to do is toss the salad. And my mom and I were just talking and there's no actual real cooking we have to do today except for roast the potatoes. I think that's the only actual cooking right. we're doing. Everything it's else is just prep and assemble. That's the advantage of 
doing a lot of finger foods. Yeah. You don't have to do it all in one day. You can get everything ready for the oven the day before. Yeah. And that way you can serve like the big party I did last weekend. Um, I was able to do all of that the day before. And so the day of, I just had to cook it all. Easy peasy. So now I'm going to grab this six pound bag of sweet potatoes and I'm gonna get this peeled, chopped, diced, washed, all the good stuff while my mom gets going on the marshmallow fluff. So to roast the potatoes, I think I'm gonna roast them at 425 degrees. So we're gonna get that oven started and I'm going to peel these potatoes. One more potato to go. For the fruit dip, we're going to start with a, a package of cream cheese. We're gonna beat that for a while so it's nice and nice and soft. Now we're adding the marshmallow fluff, which I haven't actually purchased in decades. I don't think I've ever had this recipe. Have you made this recipe I before? I have made it before, like for um, sh baby showers and stuff oh, like okay. that. I've not served it at a party at our house though. We will have grandkids hanging out all day. So I wanted to put a, a decent type snack out. Now the marshmallow fluff isn't probably the best, but they'll be eating fruit that way throughout the day. And then I'm not gonna waste this orange juice. I'm gonna go ahead and make up the rest of this orange juice and serve it for breakfast with all the grandkids. So how much orange juice goes into the? A couple of tablespoons. Oh, okay. Does that look like a couple of tablespoons? Yeah. I just scoop some off. Looks great. But you fold the marshmallow fluff in next gently so that it doesn't all pop the bubbles. And I'm gonna scrape the cream cheese off the bottom so that it incorporates easier and all the cream cheese isn't stuck on the bottom of the bowl. My blade doesn't go to the, the exact bottom of the bowl. I don't have one of those blades with the little rubber spatula. Mm -hmm. Do you have one with a I, rubber spatula? Mm -hmm. I, do. I don't, so I have to scrape it. I still have to scrape it even with the rubber one. So I'm getting these potatoes diced and we think we have too many potatoes for the salad we're gonna make. So because we're roasting these the day before, we'll keep some of them out of the salad and then if the grandkids just want plain roasted sweet potatoes, I think we're gonna serve some that are just plain roasted sweet potatoes without the goat cheese and the vinaigrette. We've got some little grandkids that would probably prefer plain sweet potatoes than vinegared and goat cheese yeah. potatoes with lettuce in them. Yeah. Or arugula. Okay, now I'm gonna fold the grape, not grape juice, orange juice in. You can use this same recipe and substitute vanilla if you want a, a less intense flavor profile for it. I've done it both ways. Oh, instead of orange juice, yes. concentrate yes. vanilla extract? I like, oh, that'd be personally, good. I like the orange juice. Yeah, that's But really vanilla good. might be if you're going to use, I don't know, cookies oh, yeah. or good. pieces of chocolate or other things to dip than just fruit. I think I've got the consistency of this pretty good. There are a few little lumps, but I'm afraid if I continue to whip it, the marshmallow fluff will flatten. That looks great, Mom. I'm licking the beater. It's really good. Oh yeah, Very With light. strawberries, not, that's gonna be delicious. Not very, oh, we didn't buy any strawberries. Oh yeah. There's we'll a lot send, of fruit. We'll, we'll send pop-up for sure. Yeah. Voila. Third recipe done. And then my mom's just gonna make this orange juice and we'll have that tomorrow for breakfast. I haven't made orange juice in decades. I'm gonna have to actually read the side and see how much water I need to add. I think it's three. 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 It is yeah. three. And I'm, so I'll, I will do about that much because that's about how much of the Come orange on. juice I took out. We had just enough space on these two cookie sheets to get these sweet potatoes. 
So we're gonna season them up with oil, garlic, pepper, salt. My mom is preparing to get the goat cheese date and bacon appetizers set to make. And while she's doing that, we'll just get these sweet potatoes in the oven. And I think I can go ahead and just make the salad dressing right now for this so that we have the salad dressing done too. I've got a little bowl here. And this salad dressing only has four ingredients. Mom, do you have, I don't think you have whole grain mustard, but you have Dijon, right? Yeah, we, can use we that. just use that. Yeah, that's fine. And then your honey's up here, I'm assuming? Yes. Yep. This is a honey mustard, basically. It's not called a honey mustard, it's called balsamic vinaigrette, but it's honey, it's mustard, it's balsamic, and oil. So that's what we're gonna do. And the oil and vinegar are in milliliters, which I don't, you don't have a milliliters. I don't. Way oh, I do have that little uh, like shot glass one that is in milliliters. Oh, is it? I believe so. I could probably just make it to taste. Yeah, I think that would work. I'll just make it to work. taste. So I just added honey in here, and now I need to find your mustard again. I think we put that it, away, didn't we? It's up in the condiment box. Oh, here we go. Left. Yeah, my mom has Dijon. We'll just use Dijon instead. So let's see, I will look at the proportions. So it looks like it's about equal parts, a little bit more mustard than honey. So it looks like it's about half the vinegar to olive oil. So. We're just gonna work in proportions here. I'm probably making more dressing than we need, but whatever is not used can just be used for salad dressing for my mom for the next few weeks. That works. Yeah. Now I'm gonna add pepper and salt. I'm gonna mix up our salad dressing. And the honey's at the bottom, so it's gonna take a second for me to mix this because I wanna give it a taste test to make sure if I need to adjust the seasonings at all. So we have in our family made bacon wrapped dates before, but my mom just started adding goat cheese to it, which I have not tried yet and I'm excited. My dad said they are fantastic, which is kind of surprising because he normally doesn't like goat cheese. No, well, I don't think he realized that's what was in there. Oh. You know, sometimes if you present something and you don't say yeah. what the offending ingredient is, then they might decide that they actually really like it. Yeah. So I made this for this other party we mentioned earlier, and about one in five dates aren't split. So I have a knife here to open them. I'm gonna taste this dressing. Oh, that's good. You wanna taste it? You probably won't like it. I, I don't, I'll pass. I can, I, can, delicious. I can enjoy that on a salad. I'll put a little more honey. But it's too, most Strong. of those vinaigrettes are too vinegary for me to even think about sampling. Oh, I love it. I love vinegar. I don't, that's the difference. <laughs> I do. Okay, I put a little more honey in there for you so it's not so sharp. And now this is done. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. Okay, I did this for another party that we talked about earlier. Trial and error. I'm all about streamlining, efficiency, assembly line. So I worked out a system. Not every date is split. So if I'll go through and open up and then slit the ones that aren't, I'll get a whole bunch of those prepared at one time. And then when I have a whole bunch of those prepared at one time, I will use two little spoons and the little ones work way better than the big ones and you use them to, as your fingers, because your fingers oh, don't work with idea. this at all. I'm just saying my fingers didn't work at all. Because it's too soft? It's too soft, it's too sticky. The directions say pipe it, but I don't think I could put enough pressure yeah. to pipe it. Uh, maybe my hands are weak, but anyway, I need a bigger plate, I'll get a bigger plate. Well, what if I, do you want me to do the bacon then? So if yes, you set yes, the, you, yes. you can do the bacon. You plop these then, here and hand me this. All right. And what I did to prepare the bacon in advance is I took it out of the packaging, I stretched it out, 
and cut it in thirds because that's about the size it takes to wrap around these dates. Again, the directions say cut the pound in half, but that's way too much yeah, bacon. Yeah, way too much bacon. All right, so we'll do a little assembly line yeah. here. And then we pulled out a bunch of toothpicks and just put them on this plate. And then if we have too many toothpicks when we're done, we'll just go ahead. They'll disappear. And toss those, yeah. So it's messy. And the nice thing about the toothpick on an appetizer like this is you already have the serving thing. So someone can just come and grab the toothpick off the serving platter and they don't have to pick it up with their fingers and you don't have to have tongs or anything like that. And this is very thin cut bacon. So my mom, when we were at the grocery store yesterday, she specifically looked for the thinnest slices of bacon she could find so that it cooks quickly. The reason we want the bacon to cook quickly is otherwise the sugar from the dates will scorch, oh, will burn yeah. on the bottom. That and then sense. each of your dates has a burnt spot. And I like my bacon crispy and not watery, chewy, chewy, rubbery. So that's why I searched for thin bacon. It's not the brand I normally buy. I normally buy one that's thick and peppered and uh, uncured, but they don't make thin bacon. <laughs> I am making sure too that when I put, after I wrap the bacon and the date, that I have the cheese side up. Yes, that helps. So we did forget a couple things. We forgot, well, we bought one can of cream of chicken and we need two cans of cream of chicken because the cheesy potatoes are probably everyone's absolute favorite thing we are going to be making tomorrow. I bought take home dishes. Yes. So that the uh, guests can take some home. And my, I'm gonna text my, he, my dad right now is on the way to get one more can and so I can actually text them and say, hey, we need 12 jalapenos because we're gonna make pepper poppers and jalapeno poppers. I was standing right there and I totally yeah. forgot. So I'm gonna go wash these and then we will prep them. This recipe is so incredibly easy and it's so delicious. And if your family doesn't like spice, you can use these snacking peppers. And if they like spice, you can use jalapenos and we're gonna make a creamy, cheesy, filling to put inside of these peppers. But all we have to do to prepare the peppers, it's really easy. Just cut the stem off, get the seeds out, and that's all you have to do. We do this year round, and they roast very well on the Traeger. So if oh, you do yeah. them on the Traeger, then they have that bit of smokiness to them. Um, great for 4th of July and all those kinds of New Year's. Barbecues. Yeah, it's a family favorite. If I'm making hors d'oeuvres, I'm making those. So I'm gonna go ahead and get going on the filling portion of the stuffed peppers, because this needs to cool anyway. And we're gonna cook up one pound of Italian sausage. I think our sweet potatoes are probably about done at this point. We don't want them to get so cooked that they're mushy, but we do wanna make sure they're soft and tender for the salad. So I've got a, oh yeah. I just forked one of the largest pieces and they are done. So I'm gonna get these out. We need these to completely cool. So I'll just set those here. And we can turn the oven off because we don't need to cook anything in the oven today anymore. These are ready for the outside refrigerator. While I'm waiting for the sausage to cook, I'm just putting a few of the ingredients away that we use to make the salad dressing for the sweet potato salad. And the only other thing we need to add to this once the sausage is fully cooked is I'm gonna take a paper towel and remove any excess grease. And then we will add one block of cream cheese and that is our filling for the peppers, which we are then going to top with one other thing before we put them in the oven. The sausage is done cooking, so I'm gonna get my cream cheese in there. I did take the paper towel and drain the grease. I turned the stove off and we're just gonna have this cream cheese kind of lightly melt into the sausage. So I'm gonna add Parmesan cheese to this. I thought the Parmesan cheese went on top, but it goes in it. So we're gonna go ahead and mix this together. I did put gloves on because I have found the easiest way to assemble these is just use your hands and it's kind of sticky, so gloves are nice. 
And now that that's mixed in there, we're just going to start by filling this just like that. And then when my dad gets here with the jalapenos, we're gonna do the same thing with the jalapenos, just fill in the jalapenos after we take the seeds and the stems out. I think we are already at like five recipes prepped. So the next recipe I'm gonna get going on because I don't have the jalapenos yet. So I don't wanna fill any more of, I don't wanna use any more of the filling till the jalapenos get here just to make sure that we have some of the sweet peppers and jalapenos. So my mom is gonna get going on the frosting for the cake that we prepped yesterday. Because we need the mixer to do both desserts. Yeah. And as soon as I'm done with the frosting, then this is available to do the other dessert, and I don't have to frost the cake right now, but I yeah. can if it works out. Yeah, just with timing wise. So I'm gonna get going on the cheesy potatoes or funeral potatoes. We've got these two baking dishes here. We are doubling this recipe, and this is my Aunt Joyce's recipe. And it's just like all the cheesy potatoes that you see online. It's one of my favorite holiday treats. It's so good. So in this bowl, I just shredded a whole lot of, a whole lot of cheddar cheese. And I normally buy white cheddar, just that's my preference. But with this recipe, I want orange cheddar because that's how I remember my aunt making it. So what my aunt always did is she said you would melt the butter and you would add the dried onion to the butter. And that's shallots actually. Yeah, that's gonna be really from, good. Yes, from Penzi's. And we're gonna set this aside and just let this kind of reconstitute in the butter. So we've got our cheese and now we need four cups. We are doubling this and this is a Christmas recipe of sour cream. I do have more shallots in the bag to refill that if you need more than what was in that little can. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. People will want to take these cheesy potatoes as leftovers home and that's why we're making such a big amount. And there's gonna be about 20-ish, 25 people, something like that at this party. So pepper, salt, butter and shallot. I think I'm gonna add a few more of those shallots. Can't have too many. Yeah, that's gonna be delicious. Now the recipe calls for five pounds of shredded potato, but or four pounds of shredded potato, but we have a five pound bag and we're just gonna use the whole bag. That's why I was a little generous with the sour cream because we have a little extra potato. And then the last ingredient is cream of chicken soup. And I'm not sure how to use your cut, your, is this I'll your? I'll show you, I'll show you. Now twist it. Okay. Okay. I've never seen a can opener like this before. Is it actually opening it? Yep. Oh, does it take the whole top off? Yep, no sharp. Oh, wow, that's cool. So this is gonna take me a minute to mix all this up because these hash browns are frozen. And so it's just gonna take me a minute. So I'm going to mix all this together until evenly combined. Well, we've got a problem here. <laughs> Where did the... Mom, do you have ones that the whole... Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. I, do. I think we might have to toss this for you. Oh, you can. Yeah. You can. You might be getting a, a stocking stuffer. My favorite spatulas are ones where the silicone is just one entire piece. Mine too. I think you got these for Christmas from us one year. I might have. My mom is getting ready to actually assemble the cake, which is gonna be really fun and cute. I'm excited to see how this comes together. When I left last night, my mom and I decided to take the spring form pan off the cheesecake a little prematurely. It's salvageable. I think it's <laughs> gonna be just fine. I was pretty upset when, when I left thinking that, because the cake kind of just like, I've never had that happen with a cheesecake before. Normally I let it cool in the spring form pan for quite some time and it just couldn't, it hadn't set up enough, cooled enough to hold its shape without the spring form pan in place. And then when I got here this morning, my mom stated that 
it looks salvageable. So I'm excited to see how this cake comes together. My cheesy potatoes, my hash browns were completely frozen. What we probably should have done yesterday when we got home from the grocery store is actually put the potatoes in the refrigerator instead of the freezer, but it's okay. So what I'm doing while I'm waiting for my potatoes to thaw enough that I can stir them is I'm crushing my corn flakes and then I'm gonna melt some butter and mix butter in with this corn flakes. And this is gonna be the topping. You can use either corn flakes or potato chips for the topping. And we usually get like, oh, I told it, you. Yeah, it doesn't look too it's bad. It's beautiful. Okay. No it's one, beautiful. No one's gonna be able to tell that it collapsed on itself. Let me show you. It's yeah, just that's fine. fine. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. And the carrot layers might have been out of the oven maybe five minutes early, but it's a dense cake. It's not a sponge cake. So you can see how it cracked. <laughs> it's all right. No, I think it's gonna be fine. You won't be able yeah, to it's, tell. It's set totally. Okay, awesome. Okay, here you go. I'm we'll excited. Oh, yeah, put it right there. there. I'm excited. I think it's gonna be just perfect. Okay, so you're gonna make the frosting first. I'm gonna first. make the frosting. And the first thing I do is uh, beat the cream cheese and butter together until they're completely um, combined. So did you freeze these carrot cakes then too? Yeah, I did. Okay, just but so the cheesecake is just refrigerated, right? Correct. Okay, yeah. By the time the frosting's on, no one's you, gonna know, you can cover a multitude of mistakes with, frosting. with a pile of frosting. And the kids are always of the opinion that more frosting is better than less frosting. So if a cupcake caves in, it's just fine. You just mound a bigger pile of frosting Frost. on top. At the very least, we'll see if we like the concept of this cake and if we want to make it again. Well, I think Pop Pop is entirely sold out on this cake without even tasting it. Oh, really? Yes, That's because awesome. a carrot cake is his all-time favorite and a cheesecake is right up there with it. I fully beat the cream cheese and butter together, which was really nice because they actually were room temperature, which made it a lot easier. And I'm going to add a teaspoon of lemon, or not lemon, vanilla. I know, I was and like, because wait a minute. Lemon, <laughs> I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla, but because I really like vanilla, it's kind of like garlic, more is better, I added two. Well, my mom's making that. My dad showed up with the jalapenos. So I'm gonna get the jalapenos prepped so we can get those ready to go into the refrigerator so we can bake them tomorrow. Another trick I find very helpful when making frosting is to cover the mixer with a tea towel. So when you put the powdered sugar in and you turn it on, drop this over the edge, and it prevents clouds of powdered sugar from covering your kitchen. It's a pretty tea towel, Mom. It is, it was a gift from my neighbor. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna turn it on and that will, the towel keeps it from blowing all over the room. Prevents me from peeking, <laughs> but it keeps it from fl flying all over the room. Let's take a look at this now and see how it's doing. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more sugar. Half the bag is the amount I need and I don't think I have quite half the bag yet. So I'm gonna add some more. There we go. So we have two recipes we still need to make. And I've got these, my mom's about to stack and decorate the cake. And I've got the jalapeno poppers done, the pepper poppers, all that done. So I'm just gonna take some saran wrap and cover this and pop this into the refrigerator. And then we'll put this directly into the oven tomorrow before we eat. So I will, I think I'm gonna do the um, cheese ball next so that we can completely check that off our list. It's been cooling for an hour now, so. We can also assemble the cheese and cracker plates. Oh yeah, we could do that too, Dick. Um, I have some asparagus, pickled asparagus. Oh, that'd be good. That we can put out with just some regular dill pickles. So into the fridge, this goes. I'm going to fill a piping bag with this frosting because I, I believe it will be easier to frost the sides that are different 
textures by not trying to spread frosting and pull the cheesecake back on itself. I didn't have too bad of a time. You didn't have too bad mm -hmm. of a time? I don't know, I haven't done it, so I just thought I no, would. The, and a trick is to... My mom has a cake, a cake turner, so it makes decorating cakes a little bit easier. And she buys these fancy cardboard cutouts that are the correct size too. And the trick is to use the frosting as glue. Yeah. Now that one has a spring form pan on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll just trim the excess. That looks... Oh, that looks like lovely. we meant to do it. Yeah. It does, it does. That looks intentional. Yeah. Should All we right. put the top off and then we know what, where to yes. trim? Yes. Well, I want to make sure these two are... That looks great. ...pretty even across from each other. Does that look... Yeah. ...centered, the top and the bottom? Yeah. All right. Maybe take a... I can't see what you're doing there. Like we need to just trim. remove that, yeah. I don't think we actually have to trim too much. Well, I want to be able to make a flat frosting. Well, we could do like the swirly frosting. Oh, so, so it, it doesn't show it, so yeah, much. Yeah, so it doesn't show so much. I'm not using a tip or anything like that. I'm just putting the frosting in a bag so that I can apply it to the side of the cake without Do you using need your pressure. Spatula? I've got it right here. Oh. Oh, good idea, Mom. My mom is really good at doing a nice, clean frosting edge. I usually do the rustic look so that it doesn't take as much technique, but she's gonna probably make it look nice and smooth and beautiful. While my mom is making the cake look absolutely beautiful, I'm gonna take a second and go ahead and finish this cheese ball. The cheese has firmed up in the refrigerator, so it's a lot easier to go ahead and put the toppings on. I've got my mixture of cranberries, pecans and green onions and I'm just going to take the cheese ball and try to push those yummy toppings onto the cheese ball. This was the first cheese ball my mom and I have ever made together and it was a lot of fun and this cheese ball was really really delicious. Once we've got all the toppings on I'm just going to wrap it back up put it on a plate and then tomorrow this is done and ready to go. All we're going to need to do is take the plastic wrap off and put some crackers around it and one more thing done. We're kind of at this funny state, which my mom has more frosting here. She didn't quite make enough frosting to decorate the cake. And she happened to have, because she just had this party, a little bag of frosting in the fridge. So she's waiting for that to come up to room temperature. I'm still waiting for my potatoes to thaw so that I can mix those. So we're both, my mom and I are both waiting on something to come to room temperature. So while I'm in this waiting period, I'm gonna make jalapeno cranberry salsa. This is one of our absolute favorite holiday dishes. And since I have gloves on, I'm gonna take this time to chop up this jalapeno. I de-seeded the stems out of one of the jalapenos and I left the seeds and stems in one. So there is gonna be some heat. I normally make this in the food processor, but Today, I am just gonna chop it by hand. So I've washed and gone through these cranberries. I have one bunch of cilantro, two jalapenos, and two, or one bunch of green onions chopped up here. I'm just gonna take a second to chop all this together. Mom, do you have the bowl that you want to, to mix all this in and store in the fridge? Uh, yes. Okay. And when you do the, the um, yeah, the green onions need to be, that all needs to be really small. All right, I'm working on frosting the top. And I don't know if you noticed, the top of the cake was slightly concaved, 
But when you put frosting on it, it's perfect. The, yep. The problem is solved. Oh, there's a lump of cream cheese. I'm going to pick that out. Or else maybe it's a lump of powdered sugar. There we go. Now, Becky, you wanted a rustic finish on this? No, you can do it however you want. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'm just saying I would do a rustic finish if I was to decorate it. I'll tell you, this spinner makes all the difference in the world to making it level and even. My mom makes really beautiful cakes. For my nephew's 11th birthday, I posted it on Instagram, but she made, I can, I'll put a picture here. She made a... What was that one? I can't remember. It was a pizza. Oh, yes. It, it a, looked like a pizza. It did. It looked like it looked a pizza. It looked like a take-and-bake pizza. Yeah. She did a fantastic job. Now, I have got all the tips and tricks off of Pinterest. Uh, I never could have come up with that myself. Um, and then I borrowed the little torch that you use for doing cream brulee mm -hmm. from Becky and toasted the fondant that was the crust. Yeah, she made did a great it job. not smooth. So, I mean, it looked like it was baked, like a crust. Yeah, and, it was really And cool. chocolate curls, white chocolate curls, looked like the cheese. Well, I the mean, most impressive it, part it was, so was she used fruit roll ups for the pepperonis. Oh, it was, it was so, so cute. cute, I must say. She did a good job. When I first started baking cakes, this was my first tool. It's an iced teaspoon that I bent at a 90 degree angle so that I could do this oh, that's cute. and make points. Because I found if I was doing it with a regular spoon, I'm dragging my knuckles hmm. across everything. So I made an offset spoon to make points. I think that's beautiful. Back to the fridge. Looks great, Mom. Except it's... Um, is it stuck? It's stuck on. Is it glued on? It is glued on with frosting, but better glued on than sliding on the cake off. plate? I don't think I can stand it uh, oh, in the fridge. In the refrigerator. Yeah, probably oh, not. you know, I probably can. I probably can. Here. But let me clean the frosting off from the... Uh, oh, from the side. Yeah, from where it, it collided with the cake. Yeah, because we don't have any really big piece of meat. Yeah, and even if I can't fit it in, uh, in the refrigerator, it's so cold out there. That's true. I can put it on a card table. That's true. And again, I'm going to put some glue, frosting glue, on my cake plate so that it doesn't slide. Ask me how I know how to do that. Or why you should. Why you should, should do, do that. that. That's right. Oh, and then I just stuck the cake plate in the cake. Oh, well. Easy fix. I can't believe how good that looks after what it looked like when I left yesterday. <laughs> it's great. You, cakes are really very forgiving. They really are. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a learning curve, but they are very forgiving. Becky was saying, oh, should we make it again? I said, no. I've never made a cake again. We could always do something with it. Um, we thought about maybe doing a trifle too if we yes, had to. Yes, that's, that's always a good solution. Yeah. It's been about 15 minutes of me chopping. My dad came in and we were visiting. And while that was happening, my mom is getting set up for the Strike Delight recipe, which is a family favorite. And it is a cream cheese. Oops, just dropped something, but that's okay. I do have to say, Becky won her first <laughs> cooking contest. Probably the at, only contest I ever won. <laughs> One of two. As, as probably an eight or nine year old at a church, a picnic in the yeah. youth division for this dessert. Yeah. And since then, I have taken it hundreds of places and everyone always loves yeah, it. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's hard to go wrong with those flavors. So my mom's gonna actually make the graham cracker crust right in the baking dish. And while she's doing that, I'm just finishing the cranberry salsa. So I've got all of my components chopped up. There's about a cup and a half of sugar at the base of this. 
and we only have a couple more ingredients to add. This is one of those recipes where you really do want to make it the day or two before because it needs to sit and all those flavors need to come together. You would think it would be spicy with those jalapenos in it, but it really isn't because they all meld together. And there's a lot of sugar. So now I'm gonna add salt and pepper and I added lime juice. And I think at this point too, our potatoes are thaw enough that I can go ahead and mix that together and get those in the baking dish. So now I'm just gonna mix this together. The sugar you can see is still crystallized and you really do need this to sit and it's gonna dissolve the sugar. It's going to marry all those flavors together. It would be crunchy. That's my butter mom for the um, corn flakes. What's in here? My butter. Whoa, 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 whoa. My, my butter for the corn flakes. Oh. <laughs> I just filled the dish, the uh, microwave, the front of the stove, and the floor with grease. <laughs> I did it last time I was here. Well, no, that was a couple times ago. Okay. Sorry about that. I'll help you clean it up. That's just... all right. I'm going to get this step stool because I'm short and a clean roll of paper out. towels so that I don't get that oil in all the rest of the load of laundry. Are you and... going outside? Are you going to the garage? Uh, I can. Do you want to throw this while you're grabbing that stuff in the... Oh, well, the step stool's right here. Oh, I thought you were going to the... Okay, never mind. No, no my microwave is too high. I always have to have a step stool. I should have, because I couldn't see what was in there, and I didn't know. Sorry about that. No problem. Okay, I'm going to go pop this in the refrigerator, and then I'm going to help my mom clean up that mess. So we have two baking dishes out for the potatoes because I don't think they're gonna fit in one. I finally was able to get this mixed up. Well, maybe it will fit in one. We'll have to see. Oop. No, I think it's gonna be too thick. Yeah, I think too. It'll take way too long to cook. And if you make it too thick, it, it doesn't have as much crunchies. That's true, and that's, that's part the best of the part. best part, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go wash my hands now. So I'm just gonna use the bowl we had the potatoes in and I'm gonna add the cornflakes to it. Try again. More crunchies, the better. All right, this is completely done. We just need to cook it tomorrow. It's a good idea to make that in the pan and then you have one yeah. less dish you have to. I've always done it that way. Since I'm done with the potatoes, I'm gonna go ahead and help my mom make the Striped Delight. She's finishing up the crust and we need to make whipped cream. So this original recipe is made using Cool Whip and we have just figured that we can substitute Cool Whip with homemade whipped cream. But if you want to go this a little bit quicker, this recipe go quicker, you could use Cool Whip. But there's three layers. So there's the graham cracker and then there's a cream cheese layer with whipped cream and then there's the pudding layer and then one more layer on top. But we're only gonna do two layers today, right? Yeah, we, we don't do, do the whipped cream on top because it the color from the pudding will bleed yeah. up into the whipped cream and it will be kind of brown and not very appetizing. So we'll put the whipped cream on last. So our whipped cream's done, so we need to move this into this bowl. Using the bottom of a flat glass really helps compress the crust and that makes a significant difference when you go to serve it because it's condensed it's packed and it doesn't, the moisture from the next layer doesn't lift the crust up into it as well, as much. And so you can actually cut it better. It's 
pretty important to do this overnight. Let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. It will serve a lot better and be prettier. You'll be able to get nice, even cuts. So now that I took the whipped cream out, I added milk, sugar, and some cream cheese. And we're gonna mix that together until it's soft. And then we'll fold this mixture into our whipped cream. And then when I'm doing that, my mom can make the pudding. And when you make the pudding, you don't make it according to the box directions. You want it a little bit thicker than that, so you make it according to the written recipe. Okay, Mom, you can make the pudding if you'd like. I will. You need a three and a half cups of milk. And you can just use the same whisk. I can certainly. Yeah. So what I'll, I'll do. use the same bowl when you scrape it out. Yeah. The little bit that's in there isn't gonna matter. No. So I'm just gonna put this cream cheese, sugar, milk mixture. I did not sweeten the whipped cream when I made the whipped cream because we sweetened this cream cheese. That's for you. And I can use the same measuring cup I was doing the butter with. It's all going down the same place. How many cups of milk did you say? Three and a half cups. Let me double check. Yeah, three and a half cups. And two cups are two packages of instant pudding. And you can make this with any flavor pudding. You can do pistachio and then chop pistachios on the top layer. That's very good. Yeah. Um, I've seen it done with uh, vanilla or butterscotch. Oh, butterscotch. Or banana. I mean, you can make any flavor pudding that you like and just do your garnishes accordingly. So tomorrow when we pull this out, we will whip up some whipped cream and we'll put the final layer of whipped cream on the top. Oh, see, and you don't want to do, do that. You want to try to keep the sides clean so that you can see the individual layers really well. It's very pretty in a glass pan for that reason. I love the smell of chocolate pudding. Here's the pudding layer. It's pretty thick. We want it to be nice and thick because we want it to slice. Now you see some uh, little lumps in there, but that's okay. Those lumps are likely the bit of cream cheese yeah, and no whipped problem. cream from the uh, first thing in the bowl. It doesn't really matter. Uh, for this, you're not eating, eating the pudding by itself. You really don't want lumpy pudding if you're eating pudding by itself. But when you have a bite, there's graham crackers and other things. So a uh, lump in the pudding is not going to be noticeable. And again, I'm trying to keep it nice and neat because it's so pretty in the layers. Stripe Delight's done, and I was gonna go ahead and get going on the dough for the cinnamon rolls. I was gonna make those at my house tonight. Not the cinnamon rolls, just the dough. But I figured I could just do it here kitchen's already a mess here and <laughs> the kitchen is no actually clean at my house and so <laughs> my mom has yeast and it expired April 2023 so what I'm doing is a little test to see if it's still good before I make a massive batch of cinnamon rolls I'm assuming it's probably going to be just fine so all I did was put a little bit of water in this measuring cup with I don't know a teaspoon of yeast and if it gets bubbly we're going to go ahead and make the cinnamon dough cinnamon roll dough here. My mom for years would make cinnamon rolls using the Frode's Rhodes, Rhodes frozen dough. But I found this recipe for cinnamon roll dough and it is so good. It's so better. We're just gonna make it. It's better. And you can make it the night before and refrigerate the dough and roll it out the morning of. So And you that's our plan. That's our plan. Tomorrow we're gonna roll out the cinnamon rolls. What I did before with the Rhodes frozen bread dough is the day before that morning, I took the, the loaves, put them in the pans that we would bake it in, you know, oiled it, put it in the garage, because it's cold, it's very cold here at Christmas time. Yeah. So it proofed enough that after everybody left on Christmas Eve, then I rolled it out and made all the rolls, yeah. cut them, put them in the pan, put them back out in the garage, and they rose just very slowly because it's cold here, Yeah. and then baked them. 
This is gonna be a little different. We're going to make the dough today. Yep. Make the roll, cut, cut shape, bake the rolls tomorrow. tomorrow and serve them directly. Tomorrow, yeah. So here is the yeast and my dad just brought us lunch. We sat down, ate lunch, and we let this rise while we were eating. And we think we're just gonna dump that. And my dad is gonna go run and grab some yeast because for the $2 for yeast to have perfectly risen cinnamon rolls, it's gonna be worth it. Actually, he needs more than that because we are gonna make rolls tomorrow. So let me tell him to make bring two sleeves because okay. we're gonna make rolls tomorrow, but oh, yes. can't make those ahead of time. But while he's running to the store, we can actually heat up the milk. So this is a cinnamon roll recipe I've been making for years, and it's the Pioneer Woman's Dough recipe. I don't make her frosting or her filling, but I do make her dough because it's so delicious. So we do need to heat up our milk. We need four cups of milk. This makes a lot of cinnamon rolls. I just added one cup of sugar in here and we're gonna have that dissolve in the milk. So my mom's gonna go ahead and make the frosting for the cinnamon rolls now and we'll just refrigerate it so we don't have to do that tomorrow. And that way when I clean up my mixer, which is trashed, I only have to clean it that one more time. Yes. And I'm gonna go ahead and get all the dry ingredients while our milk is still heating up. This makes a lot of cinnamon rolls. The first time I made this, it was just a random day that I wanted to bake something and I was like, oh, I'm gonna make cinnamon rolls. And I made this recipe and I called everyone I knew and said, do you need cinnamon rolls? Because it calls for nine cups of flour. So that's, that should be a dead giveaway. I know, I, well I thought, and then I read it and it said I only made like 12 cinnamon rolls, but no, it makes way more than that. So one, two, three, but you're only gonna start out with eight cups first. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this recipe is a little bit odd because it not only calls for yeast, but it also calls for baking powder and baking soda. So this is my ninth cup here. We're gonna reserve that. So we're done with flour. Set this aside. And then to this, what? This is the third box of butter. <laughs> We've gone through? Yes, and the last two, oh, uh, get a hold of this. I have to pull the up the last recipe. last two of cream eight cheese. packages of cream cheese. I think 12. Oh. It was two, six pa oh, two packs of six. So we've gone through a lot of cream cheese. There's a lot of calories in this dinner. <laughs> that is true. So we've got our eight cups of flour in here. We have one cup of flour here, and I need to look up the recipe here. This is what makes this in recipe interesting, is that we need, it says one heaping teaspoon of baking powder. So this is definitely not a, an exact type recipe, so I call that heaping. I don't know exactly what heaping means. And then one scant tablespoon baking soda. So I don't know. Does that look like a scant tablespoon of baking soda? So I'm gonna put that in here along with our salt, which Can is- Can I turn this on? Yep, go ahead. Salt. Now I have all my components for my, other than I guess we need oil, but we need to put the yeast in before. I have really enjoyed working with room temperature butter I and know. room temperature cream cheese. We took it out yesterday. It's just so much nicer. Okay, I'm gonna put this away. I'll have to note that next time we do a baking or a cooking day like that to get it out the day before. So that's the frosting, the frosting's done. Well, not yet, that's just the butter and cream cheese. Oh, you need the powdered sugar still? Yeah. My dad to the rescue. He just got our yeast for us, so I'm gonna get this in our milk, which is cooled down now. Two packets of that in here, and we're gonna let this bloom for a couple minutes. And then I pre-measured out some oil that's gonna go in next. It. But I like to do the oil separate from the milk. Becky, is it true? I have heard that if you pour your oil in and then your yeast, the oil traps your yeast 
And it doesn't rise as well. I don't know, but to me it seems like it would. So I like to just be on the safe side, let my yeast proof with whatever liquid and then add my oil after it's dissolved. Cause that's what yeast they're in. There's like a little capsule around each one, the active dry. And so you want to dissolve that before you actually put it into your bread. I got a new towel because I put the other towel in the laundry when I went to make the frosting, it wasn't big enough. <laughs> show, show her, it's, show them it was only that big. And it covered my kitchen with powdered sugar. <laughs> that's okay. Use a big one. Yeah. So we're just starting the cleaning up process kind of while we're waiting for our yeast to proof. So this is gonna be a little bit of a sticky dough because we still have the one cup of flour we're gonna add once this rises for one hour. So just like that, it's done. So it comes together super quickly. We still have, this we'll add. So don't be worried if it's very, very sticky, because it is. We're gonna cover it and let this rise for one hour. So here's all we got done. My mom is almost done doing the dishes. We've got our crab cakes we're gonna cook tomorrow. We've got our stuffed peppers we're gonna cook tomorrow. Our dates wrapped with bacon for tomorrow. <laughs> Two things of potatoes, our salad with our dressing, our potato salad. It's funny, this is a salad with potatoes in it. And so I said potato salad, my mom was like, what? I'm having potato salad. <laughs> but it technically, I guess, is a sweet potato a salad. A sweet potato salad. So that's ready. We are going to kind of layer it. We're not going to toss it like you would think a regular salad because the potatoes are soft. So you'll see it tomorrow. I think we'll it's going to be beautiful. Yes, because there's pomegranates that we need to put on the top of it. We have our frosting for the cinnamon rolls, our carrot cake with a cheesecake layer here. And then we've got our two kind of dips. We've got our cheese ball and our cranberry salsa, which will be served over cream cheese. Stripe Delight. And then I'm just waiting for the dough to be done so we can finish that and plop that in the refrigerator. We'll also have a fruit plate with that um, marshmallow okay. fluff cream cheese fruit dip. We'll have uh, cheese and crackers and meats, you know, those like salami things. Um, they aren't what I'm gonna eat, but there are <laughs> lots of people who like them, yeah. like that sort of thing. So those will be two more things we'll have uh, for the evening. And tomorrow my mom and I will be making rolls and dinner rolls. dinner rolls and ham and we'll actually be making up the cinnamon rolls. So we do have quite a bit to do tomorrow, but not a ton because we did. Yes, we have to bake the um, hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, but I think it's going to be a pretty easy. Well, for breakfast, we'll make scrambled eggs and sausage. Oh, yeah, I so need to bring sausage. So it's not just cinnamon rolls. Yes, that isn't really helpful with grandkids all day. Yeah, just carbs. <laughs> this has been rising now for an hour and this is where the recipe is a little bit different. We're gonna take our baking powder, baking soda, flour, salt, and mix that into our dough that's already been rising. My mom right now is cleaning the counters and we noticed that we really didn't make a huge mess on the stove because we didn't do a ton of cooking on this really, stove. Really, all we did was the sausage. Yeah, that's really all we did. And I refilled my spices yesterday, and I, poor planning, I threw the empty bags onto the stove top. Oh no. We know they aren't completely empty. Yes. So I've got it, it smells really nice cleaning it now. I have all kind of spice powders all over the stove. So my dad, if you've been here when we make our holiday meals, he usually comes in behind my mom and I, and he'll clean the floors. And then my mom tonight is gonna to go ahead and set the table for breakfast, because the breakfast is just gonna be my immediate family. And then we're gonna do presents, and then we're just gonna hang out for a few hours, and then we will make and cook all the appetizers, and then a bunch of friends are gonna come over, and it's just gonna be one really big party. And some more relatives that live local. Oh yeah, and some more relatives that live local. And so if you were worried about your dough before 
you added that last cup of flour. Once you add that last cup of flour, there's no need to worry about it. It comes together really beautiful. I'm just gonna mix this and knead this until all that flour is in. Incorporated, I will cover it. I'll probably spray it with a little bit of cooking spray just so it doesn't dry out. And then we'll pop this in the fridge. While this was rising, my mom and I sat down and kind of figured out our timeline for tomorrow and when I should be here. I think I'm gonna to plan to be here around 8 a.m. We're gonna have brunch at around 11.30 or noon. And so I know what my day looks like tomorrow. So friend, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me and my mom in my mom's kitchen today. I really appreciate it. And if you're new, please consider subscribing because next you're gonna see how this whole dinner party comes together. I'm so glad you came, it was great fun. Thank you for being here, thank you for being you. If you wanna watch some more videos of me and my mom cooking, I can pop those right here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you're having a fantastic holiday season and we can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend. Bye bye.